Hey, welcome to edX world. This is another video in the IGCSE accounting video series. So today we're going to study about incomplete records, businesses that do not follow double entry bookkeeping and do not maintain complete accounting records. How do we calculate profit for such firms and prepare financial statements if required for such firms. So we start this video by understanding the difference between double entry bookkeeping and the system of incomplete records. Then we understand the meaning and purpose of statement of affairs. How to calculate profit using the opening and closing capital. Once we have the open opening and closing capitals using the statement of affairs, we calculate the opening and closing capitals. Then how do we arrive at the profit? Use the control account formats to calculate the credit sales and credit purchases for the period and then use some specific ratios such as gross profit margin, gross profit markup and inventory turnover to calculate some missing figures. For example, calculate the missing inventory, closing inventory, calculate missing purchases, etc. We would see some examples in this video, but if you're interested in practicing more questions, if you're interested in studying more theory on this chapter, you can consider buying our course, which is just for $99. That'll give you access until June 2021. If you're not sure about paying for the course, you can always register for the course, check out the free lessons in the course, and then decide whether you want to pay or no. So what is the difference between double entry and incomplete records? In double entry bookkeeping, every transaction is given two effects, one debit effect and one credit effect. We prepare ledger accounts. So every transaction is recorded at least in two accounts and debit is always equal to credit. But in incomplete records, there is no such system. The firm or the proprietor may maintain random books as per his convenience, whatever he finds necessary to maintain the records for the business. So there will not be a systematic record of all transactions using the debit and credit system. So following this, obviously when you maintain proper double entry bookkeeping and ledger accounts, you will be able to prepare a trial balance at the end, summarize the transactions. And if the trial balance does not match, it also gives you a hint that there has been some error made in the accounting records. But when you're following incomplete records, you cannot prepare a trial balance because double entry was not maintained and hence there is no system to check the arithmetical accuracy of the accounting records later. And once you have the trial balance in case of double entry bookkeeping, you can always prepare detailed financial statements. You can prepare the income statement to calculate profit or loss, and you can prepare the balance sheet or the statement of financial position to study the financial position of the business on that date. But in case of incomplete records, detailed financial statements cannot be prepared though profit can be calculated, but not as detailed as in case of a double entry system. Going ahead, statement of affairs. What is the statement of affairs? The statement of affairs is a statement showing the assets and liabilities of the business on a particular date. Okay. So why is the statement of affairs prepared? It is prepared to calculate the capital on that date. If you know the accounting equation, accounting equation states that the capital is equal to assets minus liabilities. Your statement of affairs uses this concept lists down all the assets, the liabilities and the difference what we get at the end of statement of affairs is the capital. The format of a statement of affairs is very similar to that of balance sheet, but the purpose or the reason why they are prepared are very different. The balance sheet is prepared after the entire accounting is complete. It is prepared to study the financial position of the business. There else, whereas stat statement of affairs is just prepared to arrive at the capital on a particular date. So this is an extract of a statement of affairs taking random values. Let's say the business owns two non-current assets. The statement of affairs begins with presentation of assets. Under that first we have the non-current assets. We list down the non-current assets and the total of the two non-current assets will be 32,000. Out of that we start presenting our current assets. In this case, the business holds two current assets, inventory and trade receivables. The total of them is 10,000. And the total of non-current and current assets, which is the total assets. So I have total assets is at 42,000. After that, I subtract my liabilities. I will subtract my non-current liability, which is the loan here. I'll also subtract my current liabilities. The total of liabilities is 18,000 and the net assets or the capital to assets minus liabilities will be 24,000. 
so this is how ca capital is calculated by preparing the statement of affairs so i can prepare the statement of affairs to arrive at the opening and closing capital you prepare an opening statement of affairs to arrive at the opening capital prepare the closing statement of affairs to arrive at the closing capital and then use these capital amounts to arrive at the profit made during the year let's see how if i were to prepare a regular balance sheet and in that the capital section if you remember to find out the closing capital we start with our opening capital add any net profit made during the year add any additional capital invested by the owner during the year subtract any drawings made by the owner during the year and hence this is how we get a closing capital as on that date as on the balance sheet date using the same format or the same formula i can now arrive at my net profit given my opening and closing capitals so how will i calculate my net profit net profit will be closing capital minus my opening capital the difference between the two capitals but i'll have to make any adjustments for drawings made during the year which is to be added here and any additional capital invested during the year will have to be subtracted so this is nothing but the rearrangement of the old format or the old formula the same concept can also be understood by way of a capital account okay if you prepare a capital account we have our opening balance on the credit side as balance brought down any additional capital invested will be on the credit side then on the debit side i will have drawings made during the year and finally on the debit side balance carry down which is the closing capital as on date let's say given this information how can i arrive at my profit or loss i can if the debit side is greater than the credit side it indicates that there is a profit so i take the total on the debit side copy the same total on the other side and the difference between debit minus credit will give me net profit for the year using the same format let's say credit is greater than debit so i take a total on the credit side shift the total on the other side and the difference between credit minus debit this time will give me my net loss for the year so this is how you use your statement of affairs to arrive at the closing and opening capitals and then use them to arrive at the profit made during the year apart from this calculation of profit let's say a owner or a proprietor who is maintaining incomplete records is also interested in preparing the income statement he wants to calculate the gross profit and the net profit now to calculate gross profit and net profit you need certain information you need the sales for the year you need the purchases you need the inventory details so if we somehow arrive at the sales and purchases figures for the year we can try to prepare the income statement so our next step is to arrive at the sales and purchases now sales can be cash sales or credit sales usually such firm, such firms will maintain the cash book to track their cash opening and closing cash so our cash sales will definitely be easily available from the cash book but our credit sales will not be available so easily so can we prepare a format to arrive at the credit sales for the period yes we can use a sales ledger control account format to arrive at the credit sales for the year so if you recollect from the control account chapter this would be the format of a sales ledger control account except that credit sales is not here rest everything is here the opening and closing debtors will be available to an owner who maintains incomplete records because every owner would want to keep details of debtors people from whom money has to be collected and apart from that the cash received from customers and the discount allowed will be available from the cash book so these details are readily available now can i use these details to arrive at the credit sales for the year yes i can if i take a total on the credit side and and use this total to arrive at the difference between the credit and debit i can calculate my credit sales for the period as the balancing figure in the control account once i get my credit sales i have my cash sales so total sales can be calculated as cash sales plus credit sales using the same logic we can also arrive at the credit purchases using the purchase ledger control account if you recollect the format of a purchase ledger control account it would look something like this everything is here except the credit purchases which are supposed to calculate once we have all these numbers we can take a total on the debit side then use the difference between the debit and the credit to arrive at the 
credit purchases. So the credit purchases will be available here as the balancing figure or balancing amount. Once the credit purchases is available, total purchases can be calculated as cash purchases plus credit purchases. And once the owner is able to calculate the sales and purchases for the year, it is practically possible to calculate the gross profit and net profit using the income statement now. The syllabus also speaks about using certain ratios to calculate the missing figures in the income statement or in the trading account section, the section where you calculate the gross profit. Let's understand the ratios first and then, let, then after that let's have a look at the examples, how to use these ratios to arrive at the missing figures. The first ratio is the gross profit margin. Gross profit margin measures the gross profit as a percentage of sales or selling price. Basically how much percentage of your selling price are you earning as gross profit? The formula would be gross profit upon net sales into 100. The second ratio is gross profit markup which measures gross profit as a percentage of cost price or cost of sales. How much percentage of the cost price or the buying price are we earning as gross profit? Formula would be gross profit upon cost of sales into 100. These two formulas are very similar. It's just that the denominator is different. In the first one it is net sales and the second one it is cost of sales. And the third ratio that we need to use in this chapter is the rate of inventory turnover which measures the rate at which the inventory is being sold. How many times is the business buying and selling inventory during the year? The formula would be cost of sales upon average inventory and the unit used to measure this ratio is times meaning it measures the number of times the owner is buying the inventory and selling it during the year. The formula is cost of sales upon average inventory. Now what do you mean by average inventory? Average inventory is calculated as opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2. Okay, the average of inventory held during the year. We will study these ratios in detail anyways in the accounting ratios chapter which will be uploaded in a few days from now. For now you just need to understand the formula, just need to remember the formula so that we can use it them, use them in the questions. So we have an example here, example 1, where we need to calculate the ending inventory using a trading account section from the following information. The revenues are given, opening inventory is given, purchases are given and the gross profit margin is given. Remember with the formula for margin, gross profit upon net sales into 100. So we have a trading account section here. Before using the formula for gross profit margin, let us put the values, given values in the trading account section. So start with the revenues, revenues are given 150,000, less cost of sales which is there in the format. Cost of sales calculation starts with opening inventory which is given 24,000. Then we have purchases, again it is given 110,000, less closing inventory but closing inventory is not given so we have a question mark here. Since closing inventory is not given, cost of sales is also not available as of now. Cost of sales is not available, gross profit is also not available. But we have the gross profit margin given 30% which we haven't used yet. So let's see how can we use the gross profit margin to arrive at the missing numbers. So I'll write down the formula for gross profit margin which is gross profit upon sales into 100. Now gross profit margin is given 30%. So I replace that with 30. Gross profit is not given. So Fine, we have gross profit in the numerator, but my revenue or my sales is given as 150,000 into 100. So using this, I can arrive at my gross profit now. So my gross profit will be 150,000 into 30 divided by 100, which will give me 45,000. So let us replace this gross profit in our trading account section. So. Once our gross profit is available, we have our revenues, we can obviously calculate a cost of sales as revenues minus the gross profit which is 105,000. And once the cost of sales is available 105,000, we can obviously use this number to calculate the closing inventory which is the opening inventory plus purchases minus my cost of sales which gives me 29,000 and this is what was required by the question, calculate the closing inventory or ending inventory and we have calculated it. 
we have another example here where we're going to use rate of inventory turnover and the gross profit margin together to arrive at some missing numbers. In this question, we're supposed to calculate the revenues finally, given the opening and closing inventory. So we have a trading account section here. Let us directly put the values given in the trading account section and whatever we don't have, we will put that as question mark. So this is what I get after I put the values. I have opening and closing inventory given, rest everything is missing. So can we arrive at the missing numbers using the information given, using the rate of inventory turnover and margin? Yes, let's see how. First I'll be using my rate of inventory turnover. So my rate of inventory turnover formula is cost of sales upon average inventory. Average inventory is not given directly, but when I use my opening and closing inventory, I can calculate my average inventory as opening inventory plus closing inventory divided by two. So if I take the average of the two inventories, what I get is 65,000. So let me replace the numbers in this formula. So eight is equal to cost of sales divided by 65,000. So this helps me calculate my cost of sales as 65,000 into eight, five twenty thousand dollars let me replace the cost of sales in the format as $520,000. Now I will be using my cost of sales to calculate my purchases. So purchases will be cost of sales plus closing inventory minus opening inventory. When you use this formula, what you get as purchases is $550,000. Now what is left is revenues and gross profit. So let's see if we can use a gross profit margin to arrive at these missing numbers. Let me write down my gross profit margin formula first. Always write on the formula first to begin with gross profit upon sales into 100. In my previous example, the good thing was sales was already given, denominator was given. So it was very easy to calculate the gross profit. But in this case, my sales is missing, my gross profit is missing. When two variables are missing, the formula cannot be directly used to arrive at the missing number. What I'll do is I'll assume my sales as 100. Why am I assuming is 100? Because it makes my calculation very easy. You could also use other mathematical techniques like let the sales be X. Any kind of variable you can use, but easy is to use sales as 100, but you can use any other variable also. When I assume my sales as 100, gross profit margin is 20%, meaning what? Gross profit is 20% of sales. That helps me arrive at gross profit in this case as 20. 20% 20 of 100, 20. When sales is 100, Gross profit is 20, cost of sales will obviously be 100 minus 20 as 80. In If I compare this assumption to my current question, my cost of sales is given as 520,000. And I don't know my gross profit, so I can use this equation to arrive at my gross profit if I can cross multiply. So my gross profit will be 520,000 into 20 divided by 80. That gives me 130,000. So let us replace a gross profit in the format as 130,000. Once we get a gross profit, cost of sales is there. Obviously sales can be easily calculated as cost of sales plus gross profit, which makes it 650,000. So this is how you use ratios to arrive at the missing figures in the trading account section. I hope this video was useful for you. It, you enjoyed it. These are the kind of questions you might expect an exam. If you've enjoyed it, if you think it was useful, please like the video, please share it with your friends and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.